background is in gymnastics. Tell us about how you got started and how gymnastics keeps you fit. So it really influences my training in that um, I'm not really a normal gym goer. To go to the gym, get on a treadmill, row, pick up weights, I find particularly boring unless I have a goal to work towards, which is why I started competing as a fitness athlete in May of this year at Fame, where I met the lovely Audrey. Um, and coupled with that, my, my actual preference is to go into a studio much like this and actually train gymnastic skills. So I would do rows and rows of handstand walking. There's a thing that you call a press to handstand where you literally go from the floor up to handstand. Um, so I'm busy training that at the moment. Things like standing backflips, and I tend to find that gives a, a much broader all over body workout. So it's good, it keeps, keeps me limber, keeps me supple, keeps me fit. Catherine, I can't believe you're a mother of eight and you're this fit, 42 years of age. Can you tell us about how you did this after eight children? Uh, well, I kept fit during my pregnancies, um, going running up to about um, seven months pregnant. I was also selling some fitness wear for a while, especially for pregnant women. Um, I was able to get back within a few, few, few weeks of giving birth. I have always been into running, so I was able to, now they have these things called running push chairs. Are there any specific ways that you think you could yourself encourage that? Well, I, I have done club classes and I, I hope to be a role model if I run this, win this competition so that you can have children and keep fit. Tell us about your time in the outback working as a cowboy. Why did you go and how did you get fit doing all this natural exercise? Uh, that was just a great experience because obviously travelling, my mate said to me, I know someone you can go out to the outback and some cash have a great experience. So um, obviously being in Australia, cowboy out in the outback being a wrangler was just a fantastic experience to do. So I went and done it and literally the way I kept fit was when uh, a trailer with about 250 hay bales would come along. I would actually tell all the guys not to worry about it, go and have a break and I would actually ask if I got all the hay bales off and done all the work to pull my own training. And then literally, obviously, loads of spare tires and like tractor tires and all that kind of stuff. So I was actually just doing lots of tractor flipping, hail bale rolling. So yeah, lots of fun out there to be had, really. Um, I know you train now in the gym. You're not in the outback anymore. Yeah. You're here in London, the city of London. How are your gains different from when you're doing this wonderful functional training, which just sounds amazing, compared to now you're doing gym training? So what's the difference in your, what, how your body's responded? Um, the difference is I was probably stronger out in the outback. Um, I wasn't as big because obviously I didn't have the food. <laughs> I couldn't eat as much. But yeah, the strength I got from basically doing the natural um, functional exercises was just fantastic. Like I said, lifting up 250 hay bales every other day and tractor tires and sledgehammers as well. It was to be honest with you how I got my abs into shape as well. Um what, what are you wearing on your bottom here? Is this part of your surfing gear here? No, okay. these are my skins. Uh, I love my sprinting as well. I uh, don't like long running. I like my short bursts. Yeah. I've always done sprinting. Um, as I was younger, playing pro rugby and everything else, I've always been into my fast interval sports. So these are my skins which I train in. I, I, my favourite part of training wear, really. And I know I'm hogging this one, but I just find him so fascinating, John. You'll get a word in you're a second. All, you're asking all the questions I'll ask. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite, quite fascinated. You've got to, you, I, I love your background, Nick. Um, can you tell us a little bit about kite surfing? Some of our viewers don't know anything about kite surfing. Can you tell us how do you, how do you stand when you're doing it? And uh, all that? Kite surfing is probably my favourite thing I do in my life. Um, you're on a board, which is about meter about just over a meter long can you strike a little pose how you would be on a, on a... not that easy because what happens you're on the board and in a wide stance and you literally are harnessed in by your waist so what would be happening you'd be leaning back taking all your weight from the board and just basically your arm out stretched with a kite hanging there and basically pulling up from your waist so you can yep. literally just cruise along so again to be honest with you my abs came through when i was kite surfing every day when i worked as a kite surf instructor in melbourne that's when my midsection really started to get strong because when you're 20, 30 feet up in the air, you've got to keep yourself controlled. It's all through the core. So again, it's a fantastic sport to keep fit and strength really as well. You lost your mum at a very young age and that helped you on your fitness journey. Can you tell us yeah. about that, please? Um, my mum, I didn't realise that the problem had a really big drinking issues and we all just thought it was part of her and I suddenly lost her and I just thought, it shocked me. The drink, I, you just don't think someone could die from drinking. And one day I, just, I was like, I just, 
I can't do this unhealthy unhealthiness now. It just made me strong and I was like, I don't want to be on drink. I don't want to eat crap. I just do not want to go down that route. I know you're from Cuba. I'm very curious, how is the training in Cuba different than a big, you know, posh city like London where we have all these great gyms and stuff? How did you train and what, how is it back in Cuba? It is different than the United Kingdom because the whole population is involved in sports. And uh, so, because the weather, everybody tried to do good, you know. Uh, also, the, you know, most of the people there would like to exercise on the, on the air, you know. Mm -hmm. And here, uh, the population really don't have a lot of education how to train, and it's totally different. What areas of your body have you had to work on the hardest? I think all the part of the body is the harder, but mm -hmm. the legs is the most hardest one. Uh, also, when you have to work on the core, on the, on the back. You look like you can use your muscle functionally. Yeah, we call that uh, extreme condition of functioning. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What, what are your three top favourite exercises that you like to do? I, I like to do everything. I'm just the type of person I would like to involve everything in my personal training session or in my preparation. Yeah. I like to do speed, I like to do, because if you develop speed, you develop strength. If you develop coordination, you develop better muscles or crop to, to, to look more uh, specific in, uh, um, let's say, on shape of the body. Uh, if you develop the flexibility, so you will be able to increase more strength and also increase more endurance and also um, prevent injuries. I know that body sculpting fascinates you. Can you tell us about how you've changed your personal body? Specifically, um, from when I wake up in the morning, um, I go for a power walk. So before I had a 4.45 in the morning, go for a power walk for one hour. Um, come in, have my breakfast, uh, which is um, porridge, always porridge, different quantities depending on what kind of training um, uh, cycle I'm in. So whether I'm bulking or if I'm dropping in body fats. 10 o'clock, I'm training weights. Uh, weight training, 55 minutes, trying to keep it limited, short, in and out, intense, and um, have a shake. How do, you, how do you manage to maintain such an intense regime day in, day out? It's, I love training, absolutely love training. Um, so obviously that helps me. Um, I had to change uh, one of my skills, which is time management. It needs to be, you know, time management. You need to prepare, you need to prepare your meals. You can't leave anything to chance. You've transformed your body. Can you tell us how you were, what you did, and how you got to be like this? Um, well, for me, putting on size wasn't difficult, but I was never really concerned about the aesthetics of it. So, um, pretty much just ate a lot and worked out, and that worked for me to get size, but then when I went into kind of just look the part as well, then I kind of got more into the nutrition side of, thing, side of things and how to periodize training just to get the things I want, and then Got the best of both worlds now. Um, aesthetic training and also yeah. functional training. Yeah. yeah. Uh, will you tell us a little bit more about that. Well, I used to play a lot of basketball, so a lot of my training was geared towards being as strong as fast as strong and fast as possible, mm -hmm. but without getting a load of size on you, because obviously, otherwise, obviously, big muscles tie you out a lot on the court. So, but you want to be strong for the game that you play, just to dominate. And you're a personal trainer. You mentioned about periodization of training. Do you yeah. do you feel that? The, the everyday person that you work with has any kind of knowledge of fitness training? Um, I think some people do it a little bit, um, have a, they, do, they do kind of expect unrealistic goals in certain amounts of time, but a lot of the people I train have kind of, they've got to a certain level and they think because they've achieved results through doing something that may have worked for them in the past, because a lot of people don't realise that as a, if you've never trained at all, that most things you do will work and they think that because they got results from that, that if they could continue doing that, it's going to work. So often it's, it's just about letting them know that well, your body will get used to anything you give it. And then you can get have the best programme, but after three months, it's going to be nowhere near as effective as it was. So I think just getting people to understand that. And another thing, people don't realise how much nutrition comes into your training. So for me, it's about letting them know that. On days when you have no motivation at the gym, you know, it's supposed to be a gym day, you have no yeah. motivation. What can our, you know, our viewers do to get themselves motivated to go? Okay, so for me, the idea is always to have either a goal that you're working towards, and for me, I like to set myself and people eight-week goals, because for me, eight weeks is enough to 
make a change in what you're doing, but it's not so far away you can be like, oh, I'll leave it today, kind of thing. So each day you should count. And also I think it's very important to have peers that you can feed off. You've been involved in tons of sports. Tell mm. us what you do to keep fit, all your different activities. First I started with some gymnastics preparatory class. I did dances for ages, ballroom dances for five years. And then I did a little bit of hip hop, funky. Um, I went into aerobic gymnastics. And uh, I'm very proud of that because I managed to get some great results there. Uh, I'm a three times country champion in aerobic gymnastics, dance aerobics category. You're originally from Hungary, yes? Yes. What are the differences in approach to fitness out there compared to the UK? Would you say that, that people are more fitter out there or there's a different attitude? Oh, I definitely wouldn't say that. I know, I think what I noticed is that in Hungary, we have a lot of people who are on competition level and a lot of people who are totally unfit. And I think in the UK there are a lot of people who, are, who just enjoy going to the gym. So who's fitter, Hungarian people or British people? Well, I, I just really can't say that because you know we have different crowds of people. I've always been around those ones who were into sports. You've given yourself an aim to run 100 meters in 12 seconds flat. Why did you give yourself this goal? And how's it going? <laughs> Amazing. I don't want to be one of those people that go, oh, when I was 17, I did this, or when I was at school, I ran that. So I had a bit of a mini midlife crisis turning 29, and I thought, you know what? I want to become an athlete. And everybody was like, are you crazy? And I was, <laughs> <laughs> so I said, no, I'm going to find me a coach, and I'm going to find a race, and I'm going to do it, and I can be an athlete. So the hardest part was actually finding someone who could actually believe that you could do it. Mm -hmm. So what I did is I researched YouTube, and I found all these different training, because from my training background, I thought, I'll go through all my books and try to find different methods, so I did. And I found a few things and got, got a few people's feedback onto what I can do. Started training this time last year, and then I had my last season in, I started running actually this time last year, 14 seconds and 100 meters, and everybody went, there's no way you're gonna get to, to 12. So I was like, okay, well, I can only really try, right? So this in the summer this year, I ran my first 100 meters and it was 13.3 seconds. Wow. Mm. And then it was 13.1, and I was like, I have to finish the season at least like cutting in on 12. So I finished the season, the last race of the season, at 12.9 seconds, which I was absolutely thrilled about. It's not that fast, I mean, in any terms, but as an amateur athlete and coming back after years training, it's not, I don't think it's that bad. Yeah.